uh, in these last couple seconds here before we start, uh, just rate your well-being out of one to ten. Right now? Yeah. It's like a six. It's, it's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's superhero slave. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes. It's superhero slave. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Dillard. And my name is Mike Royer. And this week, we break down more of San Diego Comic-Con's news. It's the gift that keeps on giving, man. Yeah, the trick- it keeps trickling, like 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 water. Uh, the fall TV lineup is starting to shape up for us a little bit. Mm, I'm looking forward to hearing about that. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the upcoming DC animated movies. People like those. Mm, I've I've heard <laughs> and more. Yeah, uh, I have been barred from saying anything about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, he's I started, done. I can't won't let him do it. I started typing it out in our show notes here, and Chris was just like, "I'm going to kill you if you say anything about this movie." Yeah. Uh, we we normally probably wouldn't talk about it on this show, but usually tangential stuff lands up in our riffraff section. So all I can say is I saw the movie. So mm-hmm. um, maybe we'll maybe we'll talk about it next week. Yes, we I, I plan on seeing it again. Like I was telling Mike, I had to work literally all day yesterday uh, from eight a.m. to midnight. Uh, it was uh, for for you know location shooting. We drove all over Louisville and other surrounding things. So I'm very just. I want to see it, but we just haven't had time. And I'm like, I haven't learned anything about it, so I'm trying to keep in the dark. You know, as dark as I can. Mm. Well, I can tell. Uh, I can tell one story around the theater going experience. Yes. Uh, totally unrelated to the movie uh but we were watching the trailers and since once upon a time in hollywood is a rated r movie uh we get to be treated to rated r trailers which is i feel like something i just haven't experienced in a while because uh, you know a lot of stuff we go see and talk about on this uh, podcast is pg-13 so um you know seeing lots of stuff about historical uh moments uh you know violence uh, really crude humor popping up, and then all of a sudden, uh, I got to watch the Star Wars trailer again, which is a you know PG thirteen movie, and I got some Star Wars excitement kind of out of nowhere. Um, I think it was uh, mainly the music <laughs> that was doing it, and just the visuals, because even if you have a bad Star Wars movie, usually the visuals and the music is always amazing. So I feel like now that kind of Endgame and Comic Con is in my rearview mirror, you know, now I can kind of maybe focus a little bit more on a totally different franchise, but also it's still entirely owned by Disney. So it was kind of cool to get some of those chills and feels again um, surrounding Star Wars. So now, uh, Chris, I'm starting to get a little excited. So you want some Star Wars this fall is what you're saying this winter. Yeah, I'm going to need it. Okay. All right. Well, that that's one thing to do. I mean, I'm, I'm we are we are kind of in a I wouldn't say the summer lull, but I mean, we're not really there's nothing around the corner, right? That's grabbing at us, I think. Yeah, right? nothing nothing particularly for the show, but usually the summer is an interesting time where things get announced or things start to get rumored upon. You know, or just random movies just crop up out of nowhere. Usually, something that doesn't really have any sort of a budget, you know, but is going to air, going to you know come down the line maybe in like October, you know, maybe early November or something like that. So we'll we'll keep our our eyes peeled and our ears open to see what happens. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm excited to kind of maybe see see what goes on. Uh, like said, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was the last one I could think of. Uh, Hobbs and Shaw we talked about coming up around the corner as well. Yeah, that's a big one. Black Superman's in that. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, that's, uh, I guess August is around the corner. There's this great movie. Co- looks it looks like it's going to be a great movie coming out. I don't know if you've seen the trailers for it. It's about like a, a family that plays hide and seek with um with uh, this woman that just was married into the family. Uh, I'm trying to remember what it's called. Um, I think it's called Ready or Not, maybe, or something like that. But it's like uh, the trailer seems to be like this woman marries into like this family that has a long lineage of like uh, owning like a bunch of board game properties, like the Parker Brothers or something like that. Isn't that like a, uh, isn't that a board game family? Yeah, so, probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so when, uh, I guess when you marry into this family, uh, the last thing you have to do is complete like this, game ritual and if you can survive the game you can stay in the family so she draws like this random hide and seek card and she still doesn't know what's going on but she finds out very quickly that she has to survive the entire night of the family trying to kill her so she has to play like hide and seek it looks really fun really campy so that's something to look forward to and then also like 
uh, Tom Hanks is going to make us all cry as uh, Mr. Rogers. I don't know when the release the release date for that movie is, but that looks uh, that looks sad and fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what what else uh, was it? The Good Boys you told me about is coming out. Uh, this oh film? yeah, this another. Uh, it looks like a, another crude uh, an, uh, another crude humor. Um, like a super bad what, with, one with of those he, one of those humor movies. No, one of those comedies. I also saw the the film that I saw earlier this year that was great. Booksmart is getting a re release, so I don't know exactly what that entails. If they're just maybe just putting more marketing dollars behind it to see if it can get a, a like a midsummer audience. But go see Booksmart. It's supposed to be re releasing. I think like this weekend or last weekend or next weekend or something. So if it didn't come to your local theater, it might be there now. It's so funny. Go. You gotta go check out Booksmart. It's so good. It's so much better than Stuber. <laughs> Don't go see Stuber. Yeah. Even though we love Kumail, skip that one. Go see Booksmart. Yeah, that's what I've been saying. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, uh, it's just one of the, it's one of those things that hit or, hit or miss this summer. I mean, I. I'm personally excited because, you know, I was telling Mike this, um, this this is the 40th anniversary of the original Muppet movie, uh, mm-hmm. and this is one of those fathom events where you get to go um, watch the, uh, an older movie, they re-release it or something like that, so I uh, get one of those, and then in August, uh, I've, I just uh, was able to get tickets with uh, one of my friends, Jeremy, He uh, we're going to go see uh, the Apocalypse Now Final Cut, uh, oh. if you've never watched uh, Apocalypse Now, uh, that's... It's coming coming out in theaters. I think it debuted at Tribeca this year with uh, from from Francis Ford Coppola. So is this just what happens? The older we get, the more attractive these Fathom events are. Yeah. Because uh, just a few years ago, I was like, "Who the hell watches these? Who goes to these Fathom events? Who's going to the movies in like the middle of the week?" Uh, but I guess we're getting our answer. The older we get, the more attractive they are. Yeah, I know. And and you know, Tuesdays, you know, cheap ticket days. That's oh. that's a plus, maybe, hopefully. Yeah. But well. Chris, before we got on the mic, I was saying that your broccoli has not been steamed in a while. Mm-hmm. I feel like nothing out there in the pop culture world, or at least the zeitgeist, has just been making you mad or upset, <laughs> and that kind of makes me more upset because someone's <laughs> got to get mad. I need somebody else to complain alongside me. So uh, just before we hopped on the horn here, I was finishing wrapping up the Netflix. Uh, Evangelion movie, if you will. It's not a Netflix movie, but it's on Netflix. Uh, so if you're unfamiliar, Evangelion, the anime, uh, it runs, I believe it was 25 or 26 episodes in its original run. And uh, the end was very weird, very bizarre. It, it was totally, totally different from the entire series. And back when it aired, back in the 90s, people were just like, what the hell is this? So then the creator decided to basically redo the ending and turn it into like a movie or maybe it was just two long episodes that was stitched into a movie. I'm not exactly sure what they do over there in Japan when they're making when they're redoing their endings of their animes. I don't really understand it. So uh, basically I watched that redo ending just before we decided to record here and it was awful so i just wanted to put my complaints down down on paper onto a onto a microphone so people could hear me chris yeah and i said he's about 20 something years too late to complain about <laughs> how bad the the uh, anime is but you know if, if they're re-releasing it and you know that's uh it's making some news rounds this year might as well yeah i mean i have no idea what they're doing with these brand new movies that they're making like just uh in, over the last couple of years they've uh brought Evangelion out of the grave and they started making these new films that I have not seen yet. I don't believe these newer ones are on Netflix yet, but it's still the same creator. I looked him up on IMDb, same writer, same director. So I don't know if he's trying to redo it all again or if he's trying to pick up where he left off because where he left off just didn't make any sense. So I don't think that's exactly what's happening. So I don't know if he's just re-envisioning these characters all over again, but wow, the I, this uh, the ending of both series of Evangelion feels like a dude who was really high in college and decided to get out a pad of paper and just like, oh, this stuff will all be cool, right? Uh, I was just trying to make sense of it all. I was like, how do I even going to talk about this on the podcast? But, but like... Chris, you know what allegories are. You study films uh, in college. You know, if you're looking at a like kind of a lighter allegory, you know, look at the fi- look at the film of like James Cameron's Avatar. You know, it's very it's very uh, it's very forward, but it's not too heavy on you. It's basically like don't mess with Mother Nature. You know, uh, it's it's been there way longer than you, and uh, you shouldn't feel like you can take advantage of it. Uh, if you go the totally hyper end of it, you can look at. Uh, Darren Aronofsky's film Mother I don't know if you've seen that Chris or not Uh, but they go extremely literal with it where like 
uh, Jennifer Lawrence is like supposed to be Mother Nature in general, and these people storming the house are supposed to be like climate change and big oil. I don't know. It's very, very weird, but at least you know what you're getting into with Darren Aronofsky. Uh, so Evangelion is like the very beginning of the series. It seems like you're watching like a cool robot anime, then all of a sudden it gets very bizarre, and I hated it. So <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at that. If anybody else has any other opinions about it, uh, feel free to yell at me. You know where to find me. So uh, boo, thumbs down. I was literally in my apartment by my lonesome, booing to my TV. Uh, I disliked it that much. Are you a subs or a dubs person, Mike? And I know the answer is. I just want to hear you say it. <laughs> I feel like I'm walking into a trap. You're not. Here. You're not walking into a trap. I'm, uh, not I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a dubs man myself. Okay, great. Well, there is a website called watchcartoononline.io, mm -hmm. and they have all three of the rebuild of Evangelion movies English dubbed for you to mm -hmm. watch. So if you wanted to go catch... The three newer movies in dubs, you're more than welcome to. I, I mean, if, if if the creator is taking the word rebuild as literal, I might go watch it because this this uh this whole franchise and story does need to be put back together. It's just so weird. And also, you can t like you can I'll get a little social justice warrior here. Like you can tell it was just made by like a dude because he's just like getting people naked and having like teenage boys kiss like older women just for the hell of it. And it's just like this is just so stupid. So okay, I'll stop complaining. That's not what this podcast is about. Mm -hmm. We're here to talk about superheroes. We're here to talk about comic books. Uh, we're here to talk about the the Comic Con leftovers, if you will. Yeah, well, they're out there, Mike. So you can go <laughs> either fuel your fire or of rage or or calm down. I don't know which one it's going to do, but uh, <laughs> but we got we got we got news for you. And I tell you, the the last movie, you know, I'm I'm excited uh, to to go back and rewatch uh, for for another time. Maybe not in theaters, but when it gets home, is Spider Man Far From Home, uh -huh. and um, that is now the first Spider Man movie to hit over one billion dollars. Woo. which I thought others had, but I was wrong. So apparently they're not normally as financially successful long-term as <laughs> as uh, my mind had, had had that. Well, I think uh, Sony's happy with that box office return. I'm sure they'll put it all in their wallets and save it for a rainy day. I'm sure they won't go out and splurge on a Venom movie at all. And probably not, but that's <laughs> fine. Um, this also, you know, I mean, again, we are literally, I mean, this Tuesday, in game comes out on digital. In case you didn't know, the the full, so you, we can watch, you know, in game. So we, I, I think you know, in a couple months we'll 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 have this out here. But it also made me realize, um, not only uh, was Robert Downey Jr. in four one billion plus dollar movies, but Tom Holland has been in four one billion plus dollar movies as well. Uh, Man. Civil War, Endgame, Infinity War, and, and now Spider Man. So yeah, I, I don't think uh, I don't think Marvel and Disney do that sweetheart deal anymore that they did with Robert Downey Jr. at the very beginning, where he's just like, yeah, I want a piece of all the movies that I'm in. Uh, yeah. So I don't think Tom Holland's making as much cash off of his Spider Man movies as Robert Downey Jr. was, but uh, still, uh, any number that starts with a B is nothing to to wag but your finger at. For for as young as he, I guess the point of it for as young as he is to be in four of those billion dollars billion dollar plus movies is pretty pretty good i think he's uh he's pretty good for a while i don't think yeah we're gonna have to worry about him uh nope. running out of money nope. we're not wanting to be <laughs> spider-man because it, it's working out uh -huh. and i just saw this news right before we started recording that disney has already set a record year in global ticket sales and it's only july so mm. they've done more in january to july this year than they did in their highest year ever which was 2016 uh for 12 months so um you know, uh, I've not yet seen The Lion King, but it's crossed a billion dollars. What had Toy Story, Aladdin, uh, Captain Marvel, In Game, um, pretty pretty good year for for Disney out out the front of the gate. And um, like you, you mentioned, know, with Star Wars and Frozen Two at the end of the year, it's oof. gonna end pretty big. You know how we have like Mother's Day and Father's Day and the lesser known days of like National Bosses Day, if you will. I feel like there's going to be like a National Corporate Overlord Day. Uh, it's probably going to be like uh, at the very end of summer or something uh, after the box office closes, and we just uh, we just all take a day to send cards to Disney, our corporate overlords, for making these uh, movies that make we, so much. We money. we don't have to have those because they literally have those every time they release a movie. Uh, they're getting away with it. These holidays should be once a year, not uh, not every other weekend. No, no, I think they should be every other weekend when you get the day off. We hate <laughs> holidays. That would I'm be great. Like. Okay, Disney, we'll, we'll make a deal. I, we'll, we will <laughs> praise you and put you in our thoughts and prayers every night before we go to sleep. If you shave down our work weeks to a four day work week, I that's a, that's a deal. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I, I take I take four and a half, and then the other half is movie time. <laughs>
<laughs> uh, corporate mandated movie time. I would, I would, I would gladly do it. You, you couldn't, you couldn't slow me down. To be completely <laughs> honest, I'd, I'd be there in a heartbeat. Uh, but that that's really cool for for you know, Far From Home to to hit that number and you know all those quote unquote rumors where like Sony would get the Spider Man rights control back if they didn't break a billion dollars from this movie they can now be put aside like they should have been to begin with so there you go uh, we had some other movie announcements you know like I said last week at San Diego Comic Con I and thanks for everyone who new subscribers who subscribed and listened and people who were like hey this is a good experience recap because. Uh, my, because we we gave my first hand experience, which I'm still paying for a week later, uh, <laughs> both like mentally and physically in in terms of tiredness. But um, Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings is moving production along quite quite quickly, and the uh, actor was his name. Um, I forget his name already. I forget. Uh, but Isn't if it you, like Simu Lu or something like that. Yeah, Simu Lu. He he's been really funny on Twitter so far this week. Really enjoying this news, being a Marvel star. He's like. Yeah, you know, last year at this time I was sitting at home, eat, uh, refreshing Twitter, eating you know shrimp crackers, and he's like, "I'm doing the same thing now, but I'm also in a Marvel movie." Uh, <laughs> stay, stay humble, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. He's pretty, he's pretty funny. But they've also recruited uh, um, Chung Man Yi as a costume designer, um, and the only says because uh, you know this, he's an Oscar nominated for his work on the Curse of the Golden Flower. Uh, I think one year, maybe two years ago. So I think Marvel's looking to whenever they they go for these, um, uh, you know, outside of the American culture films, such as Black Panther two, or Black Panther, and, and you know other movies, they're they're really trying to hire people who understand the culture and do it right and and do the quality well. Right. Yeah, I, I wonder what they're gonna do uh, with uh, the language barrier. You know, is it just gonna be like a mixture where we're gonna, it's gonna be subtitled at start, but then two characters have that awkward transition where they're just like, hey, do you also know how to speak English? I'm actually trying to practice my English right now. Would you like to go ahead and speak the rest of this movie in English? Or maybe they'll take the approach like they did with uh, HBO's Chernobyl, where really everybody in that miniseries should have been speaking Russian, but they just all spoke English and just nobody mentioned it just because it was for an English audience. So it'd be clever to see what they do there. You know, if all these Marvel movies, you know, are the same, they always seem to have a little bit of globe trottingness to them anyway. So who knows? Maybe Shang Chi will like show up in like London or something like that and punch somebody in London and then fly down to. I don't know uh, South America and punch somebody in South America. You know, just punching people all all over the world. He's not. He's not um, Russell <laughs> well, Crowe. Yeah. <laughs> Russell Crowe in his tugboat. He's not Russell Crowe. He's gonna be fighting around. You know, uh, you know, probably Asia. Uh, we're probably gonna see some subtitles, Mike. We're gonna have to read a little bit of this movie. I know you're gonna be upset. So no, what we'll do is when that's it comes okay out, with me. when it comes out, I will personally dub over those sections for you uh me oh, reading those lines so you we should can... not have you should not have recorded that uh because i'm gonna hold that to you oh uh, you know i'll do it i have a very specific set of skills mike um oh God. the one time i my gave my um we recorded game of thrones for my in-laws i gave it to them i put the south park game of thrones <laughs> version song on the end credits uh because i was like i can edit this really fast uh, and by the time we got to the end, they were very <laughs> taken aback. So, <laughs> oh, Chris. Yeah, I know, I know. We have fun. We have fun. look out, look out for the exclusive digital release of Shang Chi dub. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to open up a Patreon where I start doing all the voices for all these movies myself. <laughs> uh, subscribe. It'll only be a dollar. Um, but anyway, um, so Shang Chi: Legend of Ten Rings moving right along in pre production. I mean, I this is coming out pretty soon. I mean, all these movies were in the next two years, so. I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of this uh, soon, and hopefully, you know, some good costume work for that. The What If cartoon animated series is being pitched more of as a seasonal show, so we may be seeing more What Ifs every couple of years on Disney Plus, um, which is cool. And season one will f- explore the first twenty-three movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Cool. I think the only one it won't possibly cover is maybe spider-man since that's still like a sony property uh-huh. but there's still a lot of other things they could do outside yeah. of spider-man to it's it sounds like pretty much everything is on the table i mean at the hall h announcement they had that big screen of showing all of the um all of the voice uh all of the voice actors that'll return or all the actors that will return as voice actors and there were a there were a few uh notable ones missing i don't believe uh, robert downey jr mm-hmm. uh, was up there uh, i don't believe uh you know cap was up there. chris evans is not uh, cr- yeah so it makes me think well if they tell a story with iron man and cap 
are they going to just bring in replacement voices or are they just not going to do those stories at all? Um, I would hope that Iron Man and Captain America would still be on the table and I would be okay with them hiring a different voice actor to do those voices because the the, the carryover is still really great with all the other talent that we're going to have. So well, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it. They could also be one of those things where they may want to save that right before it comes out as a last minute announcement. Um, oh yeah, maybe that's but, possible. Be like, hey, we we're doing Iron Man thing, and we got Robert Downey Jr. back at this. But also, they have so many people who voiced Iron Man to sound like Robert Downey Jr. in the past ten years. Like, could easily be like, hey, you're the current Iron Man actor. Let's just. I mean, do this would this sounds crazy, but we thought the idea of them like de aging characters or just. Disney in general just recreating old actors was crazy to begin with but they have you know deep fakes are starting to become very popular on the internet and I know that's just for the visual for the face but there is also deep fakes out there for voices like you can run just hours and hours and hours of somebody's voice into this algorithm and then you can use it to speak whatever lines you want it to and it's getting like creepily accurate. I wouldn't be surprised anymore if Disney could just ingest all of like Robert Downey Jr.'s voice and just make him say whatever they wanted him to say uh, for a cartoon. Like it does sound really crazy right now in like 1984-ish, uh, but I mean they recreated uh, they already recreated dead actors, so uh, who knows? Maybe that's gonna they're gonna be their big weird announcement. Well, I I mean I could also maybe even see you know less uh, creepy like that. Maybe going with the. Uh the guy who does Samurai Jack's approach was it Gindy Tar- Tarkovsky? Mm-hmm. Tarkovsky, and letting like you know maybe reusing some dialogue from the movies, but then approaching the rest of that episode as a visual story of just sounds and explosions and and that rather cool. than dialogue. I'm down with that that idea also. So there's a lot of things. So it looks like they're going to be adding twists to these known stories, these known movies, to see how things turn out differently. Um, and it looks like this you know with these what ifs, like I said, the only thing would be like. I don't see these affecting the MCU as a whole, but no. knowing where this takes off in the timeline with the, the WandaVision and Doctor Strange and the um, Multiverse of Madness, this is after that saying, hey, maybe we see some alternate universes and meet the Watcher earlier in those movies, and then this is that result of like, hey, here's some other things we could show you um, afterwards. Uh-huh. But if you dive into the logo of this show, uh, High Resolution, they show some other known Marvel Comics properties. Most uh, importantly, they show a, a zombified Captain America right there uh, in the logo. Ah, there we go. Marvel Zombies. Marvel Zombies. Uh, I have all the issues right behind me, actually, uh, <laughs> on trade form. So uh, it's why I really enjoyed that, that universe. It's a whole different take on the zombie trope, I guess. Yeah, the, the, the one thing that I'm curious about with this What If series is if an idea in the Marvel Universe becomes a What If story for Disney+, Plus, does that entirely remove it from the table of being, a, of being an element further along down the line in the MCU? Now, it totally makes sense to me that Marvel Zombies is very high concept, very strange, very, uh, very science fiction-y, just basically parody, if you will. Um, that's not going to show up in the MCU proper. It just doesn't make any sense. Uh, it would be so weird if just for like one movie, everyone turned into zombies, and then at the very end they're fine, and then just the, the the MCU just continues to move on. So that makes sense. But like, what if they just did something, you know, a little bit more, you know, basic? Like, what if they were just like, what if Squirrel Girl was in the MCU or something like that? You know, what if uh, what if a squirrel could attack like a an outrider or something like that. Does that mean Squirrel Girl will never appear in the MCU later down the line? I don't know. So uh, I would assume that they're going to go very out there with all these ideas because if it's a little too plausible or too believable, it seems like uh, you know there could be a director or a writer along the line that be like, oh, well, I can't use that story anymore. It was in the what if. Well, I mean, I think the thing with the what if is it's like small variations. So they could change it up. They could like, well, this is like, you know, a Squirrel Girl that's more of a mutant who looks more like a squirrel. Um, because it's animated. There's no rules. They can really go wild with all the animation mm-hmm. and, and be like, hey, well, this is how it looked in the what if, but like, you know, we're just small changes and this is what the reality of it is, I guess. Um, so I don't think it takes it off the table completely, but if they go too realistic, that defeats the point of the whole having the whole animation aspect yeah. of this. I mean, let's be obvious. We all want to see Ant Man go up Thanos' shorts. That's what we're trying to see happen. I want to see Marvel have the courage to show it to us. So, um, I mean, that's going to be that's going to be if they want my if they want my eight dollars a month, they're going to have to 
they're gonna have to show Ant Man do a little extra exploring. I don't I don't think they're gonna have to show that to get your money, Mike. I think I think you're already <laughs> sold. Damn it, Chris. Uh, but one of the other things in there is if you look around on on the, the logo here, um, they show an original Iron Man armor, which is like an older than a Mark One style armor. So mm-hmm. maybe that um, uh, Howard Stark maybe created an armor before Tony was born and, and maybe that's another what if kind of property like yeah that would be cool i mean that could also possibly depending on how long these episodes are and how many ideas that they want to explore i could see that crossing over with this idea where they said oh what if peggy carter was Mm -hmm. actually got the super soldier serum i could i could see those two things happening in the same episode yeah you could be like a 1940s avengers kind of thing exactly uh and thor could be there because you know thor's hundreds of thousands of years old probably so the odin son is omnipresent yeah so or maybe it's Loki. I don't know. Uh, but there's What If has a ton of opportunities, a um, ton of ideas, and like I said, being, being animated on there, I think it's going to be a fun little property, and you know, hopefully, maybe, it'll tie into the MCU at large more than we think it will already. So Because if, that, if it doesn't, I don't know why they put it up on the, the timeline last week. So, uh, excited to see what that does. Thor... Love and Thunder, the Thor four movie. I never thought we would get. I mean, to be honest, what other movie got four? What other character got four movies? Right? Um, <laughs> they have signed Natalie Portman up for this movie six months ago. It was not a recent addition to get her on, which you know she was always the biggest what if because she was not in Ragnarok. Uh, they kind of treated her pretty rough in uh, the Dark World, and you know I didn't think she'd ever want to come back. But uh, apparently, six months ago they. Uh, she met with Taika Waititi in a meeting and agreed to do it after that first meeting alone. Off, off probably because of Taika Waititi is probably a joy to be around, and anybody sitting in a room with him will probably just say yes because uh, he just seems extremely charismatic. And we're going to be talking about Taika a little bit later in the show too. So um, yeah, if I was in a room with Taika Waititi and he was just like, "Hey, you want to be in my movie?" I'll be like, "Yeah, I'll do <laughs> it. Uh, I'll pay you. How much money do you want out of my wallet to let me do this?" Yeah, yeah you have a lovely New Zealand accent. I'll do whatever you say. Yeah, uh, but also you. Know, I think that also leads to why she, they were able. She recorded lines, um, one or two lines for the uh, in game, and that you know that was done over six months ago or around six months ago. So that probably ties into her her working on all this stuff. Like, hey, do these lines for us real fast. So uh, that's cool. I'm excited to see these this Jane Foster version of Thor. Maybe see where it comes around. How does she get to be worthy? Will Beta Ray Bill show up and get the other hammer? I don't know. Will Thor end up with the Asgardians of the Galaxy in Phase Five? <laughs> Are you reading like the next time on episode script in mm-hmm. your in your lap right now? What yeah. will happen? Them Duke boys are at it again, Mike. Uh, <laughs> stay tuned for next time. But another movie that was not on the panel but brought up was Black Panther Two last week, and apparently the the thing is with the director for all the for some of the actors like we're working hard on it and you're in it, and that's uh, for actress uh, is that. Dana Guerrera, Danai Guerrera. Sure. She's in Walking Dead, Michonne. She plays a Koye in Infinity War, in game Black Panther. Uh, she's apparently going to be in it, so uh, not really surprised there. But like, not her just knowing that she's in it, and like they're working on it. It's about all they can say for for the time being. Yeah, I think the two things that I'm looking for uh, coming out of Black Panther news is. Um, what's it going to be about? It, I think is going to be a big point. Like, who's the villain going to be? That's the big question that we need answered for the next film. And then also, are any of the characters from Black Panther going to split off or splinter off into any other movies? Because it might be a few years before we get another Black Panther movie, but it doesn't mean that these characters couldn't pop up either in a in a limited series or in mm-hmm. one of the movies. So I'll I'll be looking out for that. I want to see what happens there. Yeah, as we, as we saw at the end of Black Panther 1, which was literally the last movie before everything went to hell in the two Avengers movies, it's like they opened up their borders to the world. They said, hey, we're, we exist. Uh, and what does that mean for everybody? Maybe maybe we'll get it to preview that a little bit more in these other ones. Uh, I think we might come back and maybe see Shuri and maybe the the, the body of Vision for WandaVision. Uh, mm-hmm. Might be might be brought up, or you know, if she was able to save most of them and back it up on her computer, and it's been sitting there for five plus years. I don't know, but uh, there's some opportunities for them to revisit that. I got to see what Wakanda looks like. You know, I'm after. I'm going I'm going to make a prediction Uh-oh. that um, <laughs> if if Vision is indeed backed up on a hard drive, I think he's going to be backed up on a comically. Um, a small flash drive and it's going to be like one of those gimmicky ones you know how um like staples has those little flash drives that are shaped like iron man and captain america or uh, yeah 
I tried like to get you to buy them, remember? Yeah. There's no reason that those things couldn't exist in their world. So I think uh, I think the vision is backed up on like a little Tony Stark yeah. flash drive. Or, or it's, it's, it's very hastily written in Sharpie V510 in. So it looks yeah. like vision, but it's not. It's just like, what, what are you doing here? Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, there's, there's some opportunities for us to revisit uh, Wakanda in the future. Because, like, that's going to be the biggest question. Like, who ruled them for five years when half the people were gone? And then oh. when then the Black Panther shows up, like, oh, yeah, he's he's back in charge again. Like, that's not going to disrupt something. Okay. Uh, you, you know what it's actually going to be? Uh, Vision is going to be backed up to the cloud, but no one remembers the password. Mm-hmm. So, like, oh, we've tried too many failed attempts. We only have one more shot left, and no one can remember what the password is. And then T'Challa comes back, and he's just like, I remember what it was, and the password was password all along. Mm-hmm. And he was just like, hey, I might run a kingdom, but it doesn't mean I'm an IT person. I'm going for the easiest password every time. That's a, that's a uh, Spaceballs joke. Because he's like, that's the kind of password he would a, have in his luggage. Well, he's a cultured man. I'm sure they got a they got a, a movie theater in Wakanda. I, it's got to be some sort of. If Shuri did it, it's some sort of meme. It's like, what are those? But with like <laughs> three O's in those, is the password. vision must be backed up on a meme somewhere. Yeah, yeah. He, he he's on Tumblr. Well, have you ever come across those, like, deep-fried memes? They just always look like they're just, like, pulled-apart JPEGs. That's probably where he's – he's probably encoded on all the world's deep-fried memes, and sure, he just needs to put them all together, and it creates a weird QR code or something. Oh, yeah. He's uh, – what's that, that that Google program where they, they put it over the image and it, like – Oh, the, like the, the – some- isn't it something mind or dream, dream? mind? Or? Yeah, like, like yeah, dreamscape or something like mindscape, yeah. something like that. That's what it is. That's exactly what it is. Or maybe he's the face app and he's making all the people look old these days. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Vision has uh, has installed himself into the app store and he just really wants you to rate him five stars. Yeah, he's like, I'm old and gray, and buddy. Now you're all going to be old and gray, so. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, anyway, Black Panther 2. Uh, we're going to get uh, Okoye back. So, Next month, August, uh, is D23, and and we, we've talked about D23 kind of maybe taking the place of Comic-Con every year, whatever, uh, but D23 is every other year, so Marvel Series will still go to D23 next month and have a sneak peek at upcoming projects, Mike. Uh-huh. Uh, that includes exclusive footage, special guest appearances, and more in a two-hour panel. Oh, well, that gives them uh, 30, 40 minutes extra compared to what they have in Hall H. And we weren't there personally in Hall H, but I don't think – if correct me if I'm wrong. There weren't any exclusives actually the, for really being in that hall on Saturday. Black Widow footage mm, that has so not I, leaked yet. Yeah, and I haven't heard any descriptions about what it oh, was either. Yeah, it's out there. It's out there. I'm sure, I'm trying to find find a leak, but I think that we'll show the exact same footage at D23 is my yeah, guess. I, and well, since uh, I think what Falcon and the Winter Soldier is like the first up, the Disney Plus streaming service, there'll mm-hmm. probably be a little bit of that. Maybe there'll be concept art for this What If series because concept art that's very easy to show show. And like every animated series, you know, has some sort of exploration period for what will these characters look like. So I, I have a feeling they'll just like take their time because it seemed like it was definitely a roller coaster ride in Hall H where like every couple minutes there was just a brand new announcement. It seems like Kevin Feige maybe will, will like, you know, spin a chair around and sit backwards on it like a cool teacher and then yeah. maybe also spin his hat around concurrently and be like, hey, guys, guess what? We're going to show you some stuff today. Hello, and then, hey. hello fellow <laughs> nerds. <laughs> yeah. Hey, fellow kids. But, uh, yeah, I mean, well, two hours is August 24th, two hours of stuff. You know, I think they're going to probably, like, what's the, it, I think Eternals will get footage because that's almost coming up on a year away. It's a little, mm-hmm. it's over a year away. But, like, they're going to maybe show some costume. Like, they're already filming this, I know, and there's, like, some really, like, sketchy looking photos from, like, London. But, like, what do they look like in their costumes, Mike? I think that's what they're going to show there. And I'm going to be refreshing my browser, like, <laughs> every couple seconds to hopefully get those leaks from this. Because it's easier to leak out of D23 than it is from San Diego, believe it or not. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm basically going off of the last time that Marvel kind of did one of these panels specifically for one of their, their movies or shows. And I remember them showing, like, concept art for Captain Marvel a while back. So I'm just thinking, we got to get some sort of concept art out mm-hmm. of one of these movies. I don't know what exactly it's going to be. Um, I would go yeah. down. I would, like, so I'd go down the order. We saw a little bit of the Celestials from Eternal, so maybe what they look like. And then the one immediately after that is uh, Doctor Strange in 2021. So we're, I mean, we're less than two years from that. We have no idea what, what it's going to be. So I'm, yeah. 
but that, I mean, that's going to be a that's going to be a pretty big uh, D23 because I think everybody is on the same page that we're going to be getting probably the next Star Wars trailer out of D23 as well. So uh, whatever Marvel announces will probably be, be I don't want to say overshadowed, but it'll be competing in the news with Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we're going to get a Star Wars trailer that weekend. You know, we're, we're overdue. Don't you think we're overdue for one? Because mm-hmm. I do. Mike needs his Star Wars hype again. He's, he's getting yeah. he's on drought. He's on a yep. drought right now. So yep. we'll talk about that. Uh, the Runaways season three is going to debut December tenth on Hulu. Uh, I don't think I think this show has a pretty good chance of surviving uh, into you know a couple more years. Uh, there will be ten episodes a season. They'll all debut at once. Uh, the first season I think was once one a week, which I enjoyed that. But I mean, if you like to binge it, you can have it. And at some point, they will get drawn into a dark realm ruled by Morgan Le Fay, played by Elizabeth Hurley. She's a dark sorceress. Oh, weird. Well, I mean, season three for these streaming shows out there are a really big deal. Any streaming show in general, because most of the time out here, uh, the contracts usually start expiring after season three. So there'll be a big assessment of the show to be like, is it worth renewing it for more seasons? Because we're going to have to start paying everybody a little bit more. You know, the actors, the writers, the directors, the creators of the show. So um, it's awesome that I got to season three. Uh, if we announce a season four on this show, that'll be an, an even bigger deal. So um Hulu's such a strange landscape right now since it's like kind of owned entirely by Disney, but not really. But there's also like premium Disney products on it right now. So it's it's very interesting and I'm watching it very close. I'm not watching it very closely, but uh, the fact, you know, that this 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 kind of show and what Cloak and Dagger can exist, you know, they're not they're not trying to pull in major characters like uh, the Netflix shows did. So I think, you know, we have an opportunity for them to see a couple more seasons without affecting things on a whole because no one knows who the runaways are. They're not main level characters. So I think I think they have a have a little bit of a chance. Um, but it's cool that they're, you know, getting some some I mean I wouldn't say she, she's an A list actress, but like B list actresses to, to come in and play some of these characters as well. But I need to watch season two still. You heard it here, Elizabeth Hurley. Chris has deemed you B list. B list actor. That's right. I mean what's the last thing you were in, huh? Was it Monkey Bone with Brendan <laughs> Fraser? Austin oh, what Powers. A what a classic, Monkey Bone. Yeah, that's okay because Mike's getting stoked for Venom Two. Mm. And actually, with this bit of news, if this comes true, I'm a little, I'm a little excited. Uh, Andy Serkis, uh, known for playing Claw in Black Panther and a uh, small part in Age of Ultron, mostly known for Gollum and Lord of the Rings, and uh-huh. uh, is in line to direct the sequel for the Venom movie. Uh, they're kicking the first guy to the curb. Like, get out of here. We don't want you no more. <laughs> Uh, and they're looking at him. They're also got Travis Knight, who did the uh, critically acclaimed Bumblebee movie for the uh-huh. Transformers franchise in December, and Rupert Wyatt, who did Rise of the Planet of the Apes, uh, are also <laughs> concerned. I tried to decode the anagram that you had for Rise of the Planet of the Apes. I was like, "What is Rot Pot?" Yep. Like, hey. I know now. <laughs> um, uh, I think Andy Serkis was also, you know, he played um, Caesar in that movie as well. So, I mean, they're they're looking for maybe maybe doing better motion capture, maybe some. Um, you know, better effects with, with actual, like, I, can you imagine Andy Serkis actually also coming in and like showing and getting these motion capture Venoms, like suits, correct? Like a carnage suit and some more that look better than they did in that first movie. Yeah. May, I don't know. Maybe Andy Serkis is just trying to get, um, just trying to get like a mainline summer blockbuster underneath his belt because I don't know what he's directed in the past except for that Jungle Book movie that got totally overshadowed by Jon Favreau's Jungle, Jungle Book. Uh, so maybe he's just trying to get something notable that people have seen before out there so he can move on to something else. But uh, I think we all like Andy Serkis over here. He seems like a great guy. He And I just love that he puts the effort into something as just um, – as un unrecognizable as motion capture, just because the the best thing about it is if you're doing it right, people won't notice it. So um, yeah, I'll I'll give Andy Serkis a high five anytime. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'd be excited. To, I mean, I remember him. Um, there was a movie he did with Simon Pegg, um, called Something Something Are Dead. I, and I don't remember. What I, I I'm I'm horrible at this right now. But he was really good, like as an actor in that movie. And I don't know what he's done director wise, but I would love to see what you know maybe maybe he can do with this and, and bring that motion capture and CG, you know, prowess to something that, you know, could benefit from that a little bit more. So it looks like this, uh, are you talking about this movie called Burke and hair? 
B U R K E H A R E 2010 Andy Circus Simon Pegg. Yes, like that cool. would be it. Yeah. It's a really yeah. funny. It's a really funny movie. I, he was just an actor in it, but like that was a a really funny movie um, about like these medical people need cadavers, so they go get dead people, but they end up running out of dead bodies, so they end up having to kill people, and they like they both don't dig it. They're like, I we don't want to kill people, but we need to to like keep this business going. So. <sighs> I hate it when that happens. You know? Yeah, it's awful. But you, sh- if you get a chance, I would recommend Birkin Hair to people. I, I thought it was uh, Rosenstein and Gildenhertz are dead was the other movie. But that's that's some other actors. But Birkin Hair, uh, really, really enjoyed that myself. Um, we're gonna switch gears over to Batman. We've not heard a lot of the Batman news lately, but uh, they have hired uh, Greg Frazier, who is a, a, a well-known cinematographer in the world of movies. But his biggest one, probably for people listening to the show, was Rogue One. Uh, to to film this movie, and it was like one of those little official announcements that you have. So, do you think by them hiring you know someone who's worked on these larger movies, they they plan on giving it a cinematic approach? Because you know, as much as I think Rogue One, it doesn't suit me. I do think it's a beautiful movie overall. I mean, I still feel like I'm in the waiting room right now for the Batman. Like, just how we were in the waiting room for an extremely long time for Gambit. Uh, obviously, Batman's on a totally different level here. So I have I have more expectations of being seen by the Doctor, if you will. So I'm just waiting for Batman to get off the ground and start running. Uh, it's good that they're starting to hire people. Uh, that get that gets me a little bit more excited. But we've seen uh, we've seen movies like The Flash get entire directors that just drop out so yeah. but times. i mean several yeah. times but i mean rogue one looked good i mean and for the for the most part i i enjoyed the movie it was entertaining so but you know the cinematographer doesn't really have a whole lot to do with the story mm. uh but yeah i thought rogue one looked just fine so if they want to if the, he if he wants to tackle batman just go ahead yeah i'm okay with it <laughs> I, just, I just did a quick uh t- quick uh wiki on this guy he also um did zero dark 30 where he was nominated for um that's a good movie. I like, I like that movie. Yeah, and he also is actually doing one of the episodes on The Mandalorian, uh, which hey. which I'm very excited to see more of, Mike, which may be D23. So, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so, you know, it's always a slow week when we have to talk about cinematographers, but uh, <laughs> anything about the movie actually getting people on board is, is news, especially when it's been gestating that long. DC Animation uh, dropped some shows uh, kind of in passing, or not shows, movies are working on at, at San Diego Comic-Con, uh, including uh, Superman Red Sun. Are you familiar with this story? Yeah, I've uh, I've read it. I I own it. It's a fun story. It's basically a what-if, if you will. What if uh, Superman landed yeah. in Russia instead of America? Yep. Uh, and they're uh, also doing Justice League Dark, The Apocalypse War, which I heard was a fantastic comic book series as well. Mm-hmm. And then lastly, Superman, Man of Tomorrow. So it looks like they're really turning their eye to Superman movies rather than most, mostly all these Batman movies that, that have been coming out uh, lately. Um, do you think these are going to be on the DC, or the Warner Brothers app or the just DC Universe? <laughs> I don't know. Both. Who cares? <laughs> I'm just, I always try to figure out the calculus of the executives at the top of Warner Brothers, trying to figure out what characters are allowed to be used when. It seems to be a little bit more strict when it comes to the live action stuff. Like, okay, go ahead and use Deadshot all you want, but no, 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 you can only do like a, a slight uh, audio reference to Harley Quinn. And like, no, 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 Batman can't be in any of your shows. But okay, he can be in a little bit of your shows, but not really. Um, and he's got to be a kid if you want to do a whole show about batman so you never really know exactly what's going to be going but at least on the dc animated realm it seems like they can do whatever the hell they want so i guess if you want a little reprieve from all those restrictions go check out an animated movie yeah it seems like also i mean despite you know their quality being hit or miss um i don't know if you've read any of the um reaction to the batman hush movie that just came out no uh, what is it so people um the original comic book written by jeff Loeb, and i forget who did the art but it was um it's a beautiful comic book right like very uh-huh. done well well they they kind of adapted maybe more of the bruce tim uh style artwork for the the movie for version of hush uh-huh. and they changed the story completely oh uh, god so why it, i i don't know <laughs> no one really knows because the original story worked out great you could have done the same thing here so it's actually more less of a retelling than just a, a conversion to an actually like almost like a a new story in and of itself. Mm-hmm. Um, so some people are on the fence like, yeah, great. They didn't do the same thing again. That was predictable. But other people are like, well, that first one's so good. Why would you change it in any way, shape or form? 
Mm-hmm. But at least if I would give DC anything uh, in terms of consistency, they're animated. You can always count on them to put out an animated movie about every three months. <laughs> um, whether you like it or not, whether it's Batman Ninja or Batman and Harley Quinn Adventures or uh, whatever, they're very consistent with their movies, Mike. So uh, whatever it takes, they'll they'll put one out. But yeah, Batman Hush. I don't know if I'm going to watch it, but well, I'll let you know. <laughs> One of the big uh, promotions at San Diego Comic Con was the Watchmen show for HBO. Uh, one of our hotel cards uh, randomly was a Watchmen ho- card with a QR code, uh, mm-hmm. and it was randomly all like that little QR thing was randomly all over the town. Um, but uh, HBO has confirmed that Watchmen will get an October release date, and there are nine episodes in the first season. Well, I mean, that's a pretty solid episode uh, Episode order. Uh, it seems to be in line with HBO in general. I mean, we just finished watching season two of Barry, which is if you haven't checked out Barry yet on HBO and you still have your HBO subscription, you haven't canceled it after Game of Thrones, uh, go watch Barry. It is so, so good. Uh, but Barry was eight episodes, so nine episodes for Watchmen, which I'm sure is going to have way more special effects in it. Uh, so I'm, I'm down for that. I'm down to clown. Yeah, and Watchmen has a little bit more of a, I guess, clout than Barry does, because mm-hmm. everyone's like, oh yeah, Watchmen, that uh, that awesome book written uh, back in the 80s, or that movie that some people enjoyed in the, the mid-2000s. Um, I actually have a, a, a show recommendation for you on Amazon, Mike, if you have Amazon video. Oh, yeah, I got it. Uh, Lay it on me. called Patriot. Patriot. You know, I've I've heard about it, but what's it about? Um, so I was I was this recommended me from from these guys I was working with this weekend. It's a it's a comedy drama about a uh, a guy who, um, like he doesn't have like the I guess the the skills or the access to to get into like this this uh war part of uh Iraq area, and he has to mm-hmm. figure out how to get there uh, with his uh, limited abilities. I guess more like a it was it what was the show with um, John Krasinski. <laughs> Uh, was it Jack Ryan? Oh, Jack something? Ryan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like that, but like more of a comedy based version of that, where like he doesn't have all those skill sets. So, uh, oh, weird. Okay. <laughs> someone said it's the best show on Amazon right now, and uh, from the from people who absorb all this content, I'm like, well, I, now I might have to check it out. Oh, all right, Patriot. And the boys is on Amazon too. I've not got to step into that show yet. Yeah, that just that that just came out this weekend. So. Yeah. Uh, there's a, uh, as we always say every week, there's uh, not enough time, too much to watch. Yeah. And they put three episodes of The Boys out, all first three, not just the first one. So if you want to show. Oh, or, oh I, I, I figured they all dumped it once. I didn't realize they were going to be doing a piecemeal on Amazon. Maybe, Inter- maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Interesting. Maybe I'm wrong. Now now, now you got to make, make me look this up because I don't, <laughs> uh, I don't know because now I'm like, well, maybe they did. Uh Nope, maybe it is. All eight episodes says July 26th, so I was wrong. I just saw three whenever I looked. I, I thought that was it, so. There you go. Uh, spin your uh, rotating chalkboards around to the column where you have Chris was wrong and Mike was wrong columns, and please add a tick to Chris's side. I desperately need to balance this yeah. this out. I, I was wrong, <laughs> uh, but, I, but see, the difference is I admit it, so I get like half a mark. <laughs> God uh, damn it, Chris. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, we we talked about uh, you know Netflix buying up shows, doing the big Sandman adaptation, and how they uh-huh. saved uh, a very loosely, very 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 loosely connected sister series, uh, mostly in the company called uh, Lucifer, several years ago. Uh-huh. And Netflix has increased their season five episode order, the final season, from ten to sixteen. Uh, they had reduced it down from like thirteen to ten, and now they're back up to sixteen before production kicked off. That is very shocking, like, <laughs> that they would increase the episode order. It makes me think that there's something personally involved there, like the executive that kind of has the strings attached to the show. Maybe it has a good relationship with the showrunner, and the showrunner's like, listen, I have this awesome story I'm trying to tell here, but I need all 16 of these episodes. And he's just like, all right, dude, if I do this, uh, you got to uh, you gotta take me on your next vacation or something like that. I don't know. It seems like something weird is going on under the table there that it would go from 10 to 16 especially like netflix wise you know you could kind of rationalize it maybe on a network where you're trying to fill up like empty weeks of programming and you just didn't want to do reruns or something like that but this is just like netflix no one really cares whether it's like 10 episodes long or like 16 episodes long so yeah i don't know really what's going on there that's weird man well it being the last one i could see that maybe they need to um they convince like hey we need 16 to wrap this up completely finally we're never gonna do another one again (laughs) 
you give me six more episodes and I can loosely introduce Sandman for you. <laughs> That's my other concern. I'm like, ah, I don't want them to tie this in the Sandman yet. Um, but, you know, maybe they will, but they haven't said anything about that yet. Uh, but with production not commencing, you know, I mean, it's better than them being in the middle of filming. Like, oh, we need to make six more episodes right now. Uh, because that that's when trouble happens uh, is when they, <laughs> they do that in the in the middle that as we can tell from Swamp Thing when they reduced it from 13 to 10 and then said no more you guys suck so uh, <laughs> whatever did you see the trailer for Zombieland Double Tap I did I got to see it on my computer and at the movies last night my my dad sent me this trailer this week that's how excited <laughs> he is for this oh it's a dad trailer yeah uh, I. I don't know what to think of this movie yet. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very like, I'm like, okay, they, they have the, the same actors, the same, uh, you know, energy, uh, chemistry between everybody to begin with. Uh, looks like they're adding a lot of extra characters, like the the ditzy blonde girl uh, who uh-huh. they pick up, um, the hippie guy who has uh, weed with him. He's uh, and then the <laughs> was it Luke Wilson and the guy from. Um, the Verizon uh, Sil- commercials, uh, Sil- Silicon Valley, uh, Thomas Middleditch. Yeah, yeah, as like the the doppelgangers of of the main guys. So like this trailer's kind of all over the place in terms of like maybe this is more slapstick than you know uh, yeah. road trip. It was weird because it's been a long time since I've seen the first Zombie Land, and that movie came out. Uh, I would say while the zombie genre was blowing up. So it came out appropriately and it, and it did really well. But now the, the zombie genre has started to fade and it's evolved so much more. Before I clicked play on this trailer, I was going to be like, oh, what are they going to do? There's, they got a lot they got to adapt to. And um, I was worried that they might stick to kind of the same formula again. Yeah. Like there was a shot where they walk into the White House and I was just like, oh no, is this where we're going to get our other like standard other celebrity cameo like we had with Bill Murray? Which is the same, the thing that people seem to remember the most about the you, first Zombieland. You want to know something fun? What? Bill Murray's in this one again. <laughs> well, that, well, hopefully they'll hopefully they'll use him well. Um, I mean, he's aged a lot since the other Zombieland movie, so his corpse you know, changing because he was bit, right? He was like turned into a zombie, I think in the first movie. Yeah. Cause I don't, well, no, he, well, he wasn't bit. He was shot. And I don't know if he came back or not from that because uh, he was pretending maybe, to be a zombie. Oh yeah. Maybe after he, he got shot, maybe he got bit or something like that. I don't remember. So that's funny to see him coming back, but there was some, there was some glimmers of hope in this trailer. Uh, I liked the, I like that they seem to be le- leaning into the family dynamic of the characters and maybe not so much about the reality of what it's like living in a zombie zombie apocalypse Mm -hmm. and the characters are all really funny so that's good um and there was this one scene that where it looks like a zombie gets like kicked off of a tour bus and then gets shot while it's falling or maybe it gets shot off of a tour bus and then it lands and kind of folds in half and i was like okay cool that's kind of what i'm looking for i'm looking for like these wacky zombie kills you know there was a zombie that gets like killed by like a some farm machinery or something so it kind of reminds me of like maybe a higher budget um, Z Nation, which is was a zombie show on Sci-Fi, which was very campy, but you know, uh, very so-so in general. So I, I'm on board for this. Uh, I, I would say I'm cautiously optimistic. Yeah, I hopefully it, it's not. It's been ten years since the last one, so hopefully it's not been too late to recapture that kind of energy. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it does look like it's different, and they're having fun. So if they're having fun, that's cool. Uh, with that. The other trailer that came out earlier this week is Jojo Rabbit, uh, Taika Waititi's next upcoming film, which features a, I guess it's a mental hallucination of uh, him playing Hitler. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a kid's imaginary friend, but his imaginary friend, for some reason that has been unexplained, is Adolf Hitler. Uh, they seem to be very, very forward in all the marketing to say this is a satirical movie that is anti-hate. So they just want to get right out in front of it and say, hey, guess what? This is not, we're not emboldening Hitler. We're not making him more likable. Just trust us. You know, you'll have a good time. The trailer looks hilarious. It looks great. Um, but I wanted to uh, point to, I think, a, a link that I sent the group chat, Chris. I don't know if you got around to watching it. But do you remember those Hitler memes? 
a few years back. It was like this where, where he's was, yelling from those old movies. Yeah, yeah, and he's like in like a bunker, and they just people put in their own subtitles for it. So Hitler has been angry about a multitude of different things because it's like one of the earliest memes out there in the world, where Hitler's mad because somebody like overcooked his food, or Hitler's mad uh, for any other many reasons. But I thought it, this was funny marketing because they uh, it was along the lines of um, talking about like, sir, they're making a movie about you. He's like, okay, uh, but uh, sorry to tell you, but this uh, Polynesian Jew is going to be playing you, and he gets very, very mad. And I learned then Taika Waititi was Jewish. I had no idea he was Jewish. So um, I think you can, if a, if a Jewish filmmaker is taking on this subject matter, I think I think it, we're in good hands here, and it looks really funny. Well, what's great is that tweet you did send. I, I mean, I did watch it. It is from the JoJo Rabbit actual Twitter feed. It's not, yeah. like, the meme is from them, not someone who made this. <laughs> yeah, which is great viral marketing to just know, because usually you would think if a corporation when, when a corporation or a corporate entity tries to make a meme, it's almost always bad because it's always overthought. I feel like putting a meme through like a boardroom meeting is not a way to make a meme. You just have to give it to one person and cross your fingers that they don't fuck it up. So uh, somehow they were able to achieve this, and it was really, really funny. So Yeah. Even Ryan Reynolds is the, f- the highest comment on that as well, saying, yeah. oh, my God. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty – it's really funny. Like, it's – this is really good, and 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 when you, if you go look it up, you know you can say there's Sam Rockwell in it and, and Scarlett Johansson, and then uh, I think Rebel Wilson at one point I think was in one of the shots. Yeah, I'm kind of getting a little bit of um, um, uh, what's his uh. What's uh, what's the auteur filmmaker? He made a uh, like Isle. It, it Isle looks like Dogs. Wes Anderson film when you yeah, look at it. Yeah, it fe- yeah, it feels a little Wes Anderson esque. I think it may be because just Sam Rockwell is like one of the first celebrities you yeah. see in it, and Sam Rockwell's in all of his movies. So um, well, it's and also, Taika Waititi was in one of his movies too. <laughs> well, even the color and like the 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 Boy Scout style and the music lends itself very heavily to. Um, there was that uh, the Anderson film uh, where the two kids ran away from camp. Uh, it looks oh, very much yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that called? Um, Moon, Moonrise, Moonrise Kingdom, Island. Moonrise, Moonrise Kingdom. Kingdom. That's yeah. right. So it very much lends itself into that. But this, I mean, it looks bonkers a little bit, but also looks like it could you know have a heartwarming story. Because what what these movies um, was the last one you watched um, uh, with the kid from Deadpool two? Oh, hunt, hunt for the Wilder. Yeah, people. it's about kids, you know, figuring out you know what the world's really about. So. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, very interesting. Very interesting to see this, and that, that Marvel is like, yeah, or Disney's like, you can make be Hitler in your next movie, uh, <laughs> and, and keep making more Thor movies for us. That's that's really fun. Uh, for those of you clamoring for your Mad Max uh, sequels, uh, two more sequels to Fury Road and a Furiosa spinoff are still in the works uh, from George Miller. Apparently, okay. this this slowed down because um, there was he had a lawsuit with Warner Brothers. Um, and then after like Warner Brothers was kind of bought by um, AT and T and became Warner Media, they've a lot of it settled down and they they found a, a working solution for this. So, Chris, I've just lost a little faith in society right now uh, because I was trying to Google how old is George Miller. He's old uh, be- <laughs> because I know he's old, and I thought it was just an achievement for him to get Fur- Fury Road out of him, just to show you even when a director gets old, he still has the chops to make something really, really great. And I was just like, oh, we're really stretching this man out if he's going to do two more movie- movies plus like another spinoff. So I Googled George Miller age, and I got a I got a YouTube celebrity as the first result instead who is named Joji. Um, and I've actually seen him before out there in the YouTube space, not somebody that I subscribe to, but I was like, Google, why are you showing me Joji? It's his name has, J- has J's in it. There's no G's anywhere. And what I, and when I go, uh, 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 Chris, I'm just upset. That's all I have to say. Wow. But, uh, George, George Miller, what director, a t- what a tangent. parentheses, <laughs> born in, uh, 1945. Uh, so he is 74 years old. Uh, I mean, if he, if he wants to die behind the camera making Mad Max, uh, Go ahead and let them. I love Fury Road. That's a great movie. I saw it by myself on a Saturday morning at a movie theater, and it was a great time. I'd, I'd easily do that all over again. Do you think they'll get Tom Hardy back uh, to do this again? Because he was kind of like not really the main focus of, of Fury Road. He was just kind of there while uh, um, Furiosa was the main character, it felt like. Yeah, I don't know. They would definitely, whatever it's got to be, it's got to be a strong silent type because there's not a whole lot of dialogue in his films, which I'm totally okay with. Um, 
I don't know, maybe he kind of takes this like kind of cool anthology approach to where maybe uh, the the Max character, if you will, is a, uh, a different actor in all of his films. That'd be kind of cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just really, I mean, the the thing about the movie is, you know, it's, it made uh, it made a lot of money. One, I think it won some awards as well uh, uh-huh. and it got nominated. But, I mean, you'll never forget the, the, the Doof Warrior with the uh, guitar on the front of the uh, truck. So iconic. And, and you know, how, how they could do that now. I'm uh, very, very excited. I can't believe uh, that movie's been out, you know, for so, like, what, four years now? A little over four years, and it, it feels like it's still yesterday sometimes. So. And and that movie did the um, did the digital black and white release before Logan got around to doing it, too. So um, Yeah, with uh, the, it's, the it's recoloring, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, go go check out Fury Road if you haven't. I feel like that's got to be streaming somewhere. If, it was streaming on HBO for a while, so I don't know if it's still out there in the world, but it's totally worth whatever you have to spend on it. Go check out Fury Road. Yeah, uh, I'm just I'm gonna use my 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 website justwatch.com. Uh, it's on. Uh, I love that website. It is streaming on the Sci-Fi app and the Fubo TV app. Oh, what is Fubo? I keep looking up stuff on Just Watch. I'm like, what is Fubo? I do not need it, but uh, a lot of things I want to watch is apparently on it. it's a free. It's kind of like it looks like a um, what's the other live streaming service uh, that's really kind of taken off. Um, oh, Sling. I don't know. It's like a Sling, Sling? TV. All right, sure. Uh, yeah, it's like Sling TV, like where you pay for you stream your your live cable channels. You know what? Go down to your local library; they probably have it. You can get it for my local there. library closed down last month, so yeah, <laughs> I don't have that that kind of. Uh, well, not if you live next to Chris, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, they closed two of ours in our county, but you can also, uh, Mike, for you, you can rent it on the PlayStation for three dollars. Hey, that's totally worth it. Yeah, everywhere else is four dollars, but you get four K on across everything else. But uh, mm, ooh la la. Yeah, there you go. That's you go. Justwatch.com. One of my favorite websites to go to if I want to know where I can watch something, or if I'm uh-huh. gonna have to download it because it's it's a good place too to have like a watch list. So a lot of the times I want to get I want to like watch these movies, but I don't want to just like write down like on a notepad. So just if you, I made an account there like a couple weeks ago and I started um, I started bookmarking movies I want to see. Yeah, I mean it's 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 really cool. I really like it. And they have an app now, don't they? Do they have a, like yeah. A, uh, yeah, they they do. So yeah, so that's uh that's been fun. Before we we wrap up, Mike, I wanted to um just kind of give you uh, I played I've been playing Marvel Ultimate Alliance three for about a week, and mm-hmm. I'm I'm not done yet. I just kind of want to give my quick. If anyone's interested in getting this, this does not play like the old Ultimate Alliance games do, um because you have to level up each character individually. And some people, like the other ones used to auto level, like every character, no matter where you were, they would always be the same level. Uh-huh. They don't do that here anymore. So if you get like Spider Man in like the first level, he's going to be like level one. And then by the time you get to the end, he'll, you know, if you've not played with him, he's still level one. So you Ooh. have to go back and play older levels to level them up and get more points and stuff. There's a lot more to this game than I thought there would be. And I'm, I'm actually really enjoying it if people were interested. But I'm not going to give a full review until I beat it, beat it. But, um,. If people, people, some people were asking me what I thought about it. I just thought I'd drop it in here real fast while I was thinking. Well, about good. It. Well, n- now that we're at the end of the podcast, Chris, it's time for me to ask you something I forgot oh, no. um, I, I would do is at the beginning of the podcast, um, I think before we even started recording, I don't know if we have it on tape, I asked you, a uh, scale from one to 10, how is your mind, body, and soul? So it, I think it was a six. It was a six, yeah. At the very beginning of the podcast, so what is it now, Chris? I'm, did, I'm, did at, we, a, I'm, did, I'm at a four. I, I, ah, I, man, we made it worse. <laughs> I try, I try. It's not just that. I mean, I, 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 we've been talking. My mouth's a little dry. I haven't had enough water in me today. Uh, I'm a little tired from staying up. I, I, for people who didn't know, I, I was a little sick last night. Uh, th- probably due to something I ate. So I'm just, I just need a good night's sleep. Oh, God. we got to get you out of here. Let's wrap this thing I up. I know. Let's do it. Mike, if people want to know what you're up to, what you're doing, where they can find um, Little Feige at, where can they, they see that? <laughs> well, all they got to do is follow me at Mike Royer Design on Instagram and Twitter, and you can read my web comics at pickledcomics.com. Chris, if people want to catch up with you, see if you're still alive tomorrow morning, where can they find you? Oh, you can find me on Twitter, Valdan, V-A-L-D-A-N, or Instagram, Valdan87. Thanks to everyone who enjoyed all my food photos uh, for, for the trip, because <laughs> I've got some of the actual convention to post. I just haven't got to it yet, but uh, thank you for all the food attention. You can also have a comic UI. Mike, if people want to know about our San Diego Comic Con recap episode last week, two hours long. I can't believe it was Ooh. that long. Where can In they person. find? Yeah, where can they find that? Maybe some of our older review episodes. All you got to do is visit superheroslate.com. That is our repository for everything superhero slate. And you can find us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and more. We're out there. 
Uh, we're in your favorite podcast app, I guarantee it. Uh, you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and you can get merch. Merch, merch, merch at Superhero Slate dot com slash store we love hearing from you please reach out and uh let me know if you agree with me or if you hate me now that you've learned my opinion about evangelion <laughs> uh reach out and uh tell chris how often you think he's right and how often you think he's wrong he needs to be taken down a peg or two in my opinion I, so <laughs> what pegs am i on that's the real question here but yeah it's fine that's fine Take well me down. you're chris you're on the pegs on the back of my bmx bike and we're just riding around town looking for comic books that's what we're doing yeah yeah that's true we would do that i need you know, before we go, there's a new comic book out by one of my favorite writers, Jonathan Hickman, called House of X. House um, of X. And uh, he's writing that and one called Powers of X, and they alternate every week for six issues, so 12 weeks. And mm-hmm. he is revamping, rebooting the X-Men in the, in the comic books. Ooh, and, you know what that usually means. Uh, th- this is probably going to take place in the movies like this as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, and and Hickman, he's a very influential uh, writer for uh, for uh, Marvel. He, yes, he he wrote essentially, um, uh, he created the Black Order, which we saw in the movies. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of the, the, the plot points in his uh, Avengers and New Avengers lines were used in this. So... I can see them pulling more Avenger stuff later down the road, but really using his X-Men stuff. So if you can get out there and find a copy of House of X, uh, number one, check it out. See if you like it. He's left a lot of breadcrumbs for the next X-Men. Uh, this this series and his next one he's writing, he's writing just one called X-Men. So, um, yeah, I, I just wanted to share that with people, too. But uh, we'll catch you guys next week. All right. Adios. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe. Let's get through this. I gotta eat. I gotta eat. All right. Chris gotta eat. He's got a short temper. He's hot. He's hangry.